Heading down Dirt Merchant. The comics are supreme. Let's see how this bike holds up. This is my review of the Comment Cell Supreme DH version 4.2. This bike, the frame is aluminum with a 220 of rear wheel travel. The rear shock is a Fox Vivid RC2. The large comes with a 400 pound spring and same with the XL. Let's talk a little bit about the sizing and geometry with this bike. So as far as sizing goes, I'm six foot two and that translates to 185 centimeters. What it recommends for me is a large. Oh, Jesus, what a pop on this bike. I would think that'd be a little bit small. It says 178 centimeters to 190 is for large and XL starts at 188. Uh, personally, I think I'd, I'm more comfortable on the XL bikes. I think that's a little bit outdated at most bikes. I would say you're an X, you're an extra large if you're six feet or taller, and then you can possibly even push it if you're five ten into an XL bike. But uh, that's all personal preference. I'm just going to go with the XL versions and talk about the geometry a bit just because that's the size um, I'm most likely to ride. So with all of them, they have a 63 degree head angle. All the bikes have a 425 chainstay, which is uh, fairly short. Bottom bracket drop is minus 5, which means uh, axles to center bottom bracket. So the bottom bracket is 5 centimeters lower than the axles, which is much better for uh, cornering because your weight is actually below the, uh, the axles. Reach is only 455 for an XL, which is pretty small. They say they have a double XL, which is 480. That seems more like a standard reach now on an extra large bike. So uh, I think that's a little bit outdated in terms of what the sizing is. I'd say the X double XL is more like an XL in other companies' bikes. Um, and the stack height is 607 for, for all the bikes. Stack height basically just determines your height of where your handlebars are going to be. So 27.5 bikes have higher stacks and 26ers and 29ers have higher stacks than 27.5. So the, some bikes you would want to have um, a drop crown so you'd be able to get that stack height higher. And uh, 29ers you kind of want them slammed as much as you want, as you can, so you generally want a flat crown. Back to the components on the V4.2. Uh, the fork is a boxer team, 200 mils travel. That means basically it's kind of a mix between the RC, which is the one that only has a, one compression adjust and one rebound, and the World Cup, which is the air version with high and low speed compression and rebound. This one is basically the hybrid of the two. So you do have a spring inside, but you get all the adjustments of, uh, the, of the World Cup fork. Headset, stem, and handlebar are all Ride Alpha, which I'm guessing is the in-house brand of Come and Sell. Uh, the stem is 50 mils, which is pretty standard. 31.8 clamp, which is smaller, and most bikes now are 35. So if you do end up getting um, a wide bar, usually 800 mil bars are all 35 clamps. So you'd have to buy a new stem as well to do that. The bars on this bike are aluminum and they are 780 in length. I'm guessing they couldn't go the full 800 on 31.8 clamp because uh, either the bar would have to be too heavy um, or they just wouldn't have the strength there. That's why companies went to 35 in the first place to keep the bar light and be able to get that extra long length. Brakes are SRAM Guide RE and they got 200 mil rotors front and back, shifter, uh, SRAM X5, Nine speed chain guide E13 LG1 uh, with narrow wide ring. Uh, rear sh derailleur is SRAM X7. Bottom bracket is uh, E13 press fit. Not a big, as I've said before, I'm not a fan of press fit. If you have any issues and starts creaking, it's a real pain in the ass to fix. And you also have to get it, take it to a shop to get the 
to get it pressed in versus if it was threaded, you can just do it yourself, which makes the life so much easier and much more of a home mechanic thing more likely. Bottom bracket presses are like two hundred plus dollars, and you know you're not going to be using that often, so you got to go to the shop all the time. And if they press it in slightly crooked, it's going to creak. So just more hassle than it's worth. Uh, the cranks are E13. LG1, so those are, the, I think the R ones are the carbon ones, so these aren't the carbon ones. It's got the 34 tooth ring, trim PG950 cassette, and the rims are the LG1 alloys as well, 30 toe holes with uh, formula DH hubs. Oh, that's interesting, I would have expected the LG1 hubs as well. Tires again are very important. This one comes with the Maxxis Minion DHF. Uh, 2.5 wide trail, excellent choice, and they're dual, they're dual compound, sorry, not dual compound, I mean uh, two layers, so it's the DH casing, but without the wire bead, so it's a uh, double down, essentially, and the rear tire is uh, DHR2, 2.4, which is essentially 2.5, they look identical, wide trail, with the same compound as well, so uh, excellent spec tires for aggressive riding. Obviously not fast rolling, but uh, but perfect for bike park and uh, aggressive riding. As far as how this bike rode, uh, I'd say it's an excellent bike if you're a racer with this high single pivot design. They have the chain that runs up and then down the seat stay, which makes the bike incredibly quiet. It's by far the quietest bike I ever rode because there's not really any chains left because the chain is basically running down the seat stay. So if it, it only has a very small distance to go before it contacts it and it basically doesn't make any noise at all. The other upside of this high single pivot design is as your bike goes through the travel, actually the rear wheel moves further away from the bike and under most bikes when they go through their travel, the wheelbase shrinks. With this bike it actually lengthens because the rear wheel actually moves away from the bike. Um, which is excellent for small bump or for square edge hits because instead of your bike compressing into the rock it's actually moving away so when I rode this bike I, it felt like there was no chain on the bike the suspension moved so freely which was a big change compared to my Trek Session which is my favorite bike I've ever had for downhill or for downhill jumping but this bike would, would destroy it in all out racing just, just for that one um, advantage there but for the bike park, um, as you can see in my video, I did not like it for Dirt Merchant. I found the bike had a lot less pop than a lot of the other downhill designs. Uh, you know, you could adjust this with, or minimize this by decreasing the rebound so it's very, to get it a little bit more poppy or potentially running an air shock instead of a coil to get that extra progressiveness to make it more poppy. But I did find it quite hard to pop. As you can see here, when I'm doing the big river gap on Dirt Merchant, I never normally have an issue clearing this jump. But on this bike, I barely made it over the edge. I just really had to pop really hard to even make it this far. So as just an all-in-out park bike, I wouldn't recommend it. But for anyone who's a DH racer and just wants all-out speed or running a lot of technical trails with uh, square edge hits, this would be an excellent bike um, for you guys. One thing I forgot to mention was the weight of this bike. As it is an aluminum bike with aluminum wheels and aluminum cranks, yeah, it is significantly open. heavier. Um, its claim to weight is 38.6 pounds or 17.5 kilograms. I find 38 pounds to be quite heavy for a bike. My current bike is a Trek Session 9.9 29er, and with pedals and everything, the whole bike comes in at 31 pounds. So this bike is significantly heavier, basically nine pounds heavier for a bike that's 27.5 versus my bike that's a 29er and it's nine pounds less. So there, it, that is something to take into account. I don't like to be a weight weenie, but you do notice that when you're in the air trying to whip a bike, if it has that much weight, it's hard to kick it out and it's hard to bring it back. It is nice to have it lighter. If I did own this bike and I wanted to modify it, I would definitely get some light bicycle carbon wheels um, and maybe EXO tires, again, to drop some of the weight. The most important place to lose weight is always in the wheels. So I would go with some light bicycle wheels and EXO tires and this bike isn't tubeless, make it tubeless, drop a little bit more weight, and will become a lot more agile.
favor? Could you just take a picture for me? Yeah, yeah. Just, just uh, yeah, that one there. Yeah. And then the second. Yes. Uh, um, I think it's starting soon, but it won't be here. Oh. It'll be going down. This is until next Sunday. So you'll just be able to really see it on the screen because it's the enduro race that starts from. If you like this video, please hit the like the button. So and if you want to see more videos like this, please hit the subscribe button. It really helps my channel grow.